When I was in high school, my history teacher used to say that we learn history to understand the future. Before the invention of the printing press by Gutenberg, books were meticulously copied by hand by scribes. With the advent of the press, these scribes saw their roles diminish. However, new roles requiring different skills emerged. When the tractor was invented, it marked the decline of many traditional roles on farms. These workers had to adapt and find new vocations. The Industrial Revolution hurdled another transformative shift. Machines, more powerful and efficient than ever, could perform the labor of dozens of humans in the fraction of the time. Yet again, new and more specialized roles arose, centered around operating and maintaining these machines. Change can be intimidating. By our own very nature, we resist the unfamiliar, especially when it threatens our sense of relevance. You've probably seen the headlines by now. Experts estimate that 300 million people will lose their jobs due to AI. Fast forward just a few months later and people in tech already have. Like it or not, this is already happening. But most likely not to you. And let me tell you why. Hi there, my name is Valentine, and yes, we are at a tech conference, and it is impossible not to talk about AI in 2023. So, if there is one thing you should learn from history, is that we need to adapt. Here is the gist of my message. AI isn't there to replace you, at least not immediately. The first jobs AI will take are for those who are unfamiliar with or indifferent to this technology. So, for those informed, for those who are proactive, who are learning, who will know how to harness AI's power and integrate it into their work, these people will become more valuable to their organizations. You're attending this conference because you want to grow and stay on top of things. So, here is how you won't lose your job in the upcoming years. Invest in yourself and use AI to enhance your efficiency and productivity. Practically all software will sooner or later have AI components built into them. So stay on top of things by continuously learning. If you can stay a bit longer, in this talk I will go over the most recent generative AI features built into Postman. So let's dive in. So here inside Postman I have a collection and it really doesn't matter like how you come to this collection. In this case I've manually created it but you can just as well manually generate it if you have a schema. But the main idea is that the first step, what we're doing is we're trying to get familiar with the API. We're trying to run some requests to understand how the API is working. And this is the manual testing step, right? So after we're done manually testing the API and we want to make sure that the state of the API as it is right now is documented with tests, what we'll do is we're going to go endpoint by endpoint and start creating some tests. So where we put these tests, we put them here inside the test tab. And Postman is also always super helpful. So there's like snippets that we can use in order to get started and to write these tests a bit quicker. So for example, here I can go ahead and write here a status code test and I can go ahead and see how it works. So I'm gonna see here inside the test, this status code test doesn't work. Now, typically what we we'll do when something doesn't work is that we try to understand, okay, what has happened, what we have here in the response, what do we have inside our test and so on. But this is where this new AI component from Postman kicks in. And this is called the Postbot. What we can do with it is we can, for example, fix the test that we have here. So we're gonna click here on Postbot. And there's here a prompt that we can write. There's also some options that we can just simply click. So there's, let's say these are like some typical things that we may want to do, presets, so that we don't have to type anything. So I'm going to go here and select fix tests. So now it's going to say working on it. It's going to take a look at the response. It's going to take a look at the code that we have. And it's going to resend this request once again. And you will see here it has changed the name of the test and also has changed here the assertion. So in this case, with the help of AI, we have figured out like what is wrong with this test and why it doesn't work. So it can be something that you may want to consider, but it's not only that, it can do much more. So we have here, I would say 
a medium complex response body. And of course, if you want to test everything that we have inside here, it will take a bit of energy to manually write all the tests that are needed. So what the post bot can help us with is simply say, okay, you know, add tests to this request, right? So what the post bot will do is it's going to take a look at the response and it's going to generate this test. Now, of course, one of the things that you're probably thinking is like, hmm, how about privacy? I have maybe some confidential customer data here. Does this data end up on Postman servers or is this used to train AI or something like that? So first of all, this data is not being used for training purposes and Postman only knows the structure of your responses. The data is not being sent. So for example, I have here, let's say, uh, some sensitive information like this customer name. This information is not being sent to the AI. So privacy perspective, we're here in good hands. So I'm going to see here that Postbot has generated quite a few tests. So what we need to do is, of course, go over them and it's checking various things about the response. So you see here different test names. And of course, what you need to understand is that, you know, just because we have clicked one button and now we have a lot of tests here, it doesn't mean that we have tested everything or that these tests are perfect. So there's no replacement for you having the knowledge and expertise in writing these tests and be able to understand what do I actually want to test about this request? What is really the most important information? And the piece that the AI doesn't have, at least right now, is understanding the underlying business processes. So you still need to be in control of testing and the AI is there just to assist you. Now, for example, what I don't like about test generation is that it can give the impression that everything has been tested. And it can be possible that maybe the tests don't do exactly what we think they should do. So what can we do in that situation? This is where a lot of people actually don't use Postman at its full capability. What we need to do is also test the tests. We want to make sure that these tests will fail if they need to fail. So how can we do this? For example, what if we remove a property from the response? Will our tests fail? Will they raise the alarm? Well, it's hard to tell because this is an API. We don't control the API. It's probably very hard to actually make changes to it, deploy it, and then figure out if we remove something from the response, if our tests will actually detect that. So in order to simulate that, the approach that I like to take is the one where we can use a mock server. So mock server is essentially kind of like a dumb copy of our API, which we can easily modify. So let me show you what I mean by that. So I can go, for example, here to the collection itself, hover over it, and then I'm going to select from the options available mock collection. And there's like a few information that we need to give here. So I'm going to put here the mock server name is going to be API mock so that we know. And we're going to also save the mock address as an environment variable so that we can easily uh, switch between, let's say, the production or the test environment and this mock environment. So I'm going to go ahead and create a mock server. So the mock server has been created. And now when we're going to the create a new order, what we have to do here is click on save as example. So I'm going to save this response body as an example response body. This will be actually used by the mock. So the data that we see here, I'm going to rename it, for example, here in mock customer so that we know that this is a mock customer. It's not some real data that we're getting back. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. So what can we do next? So we have this example here. We have created this mock server. So now in order to use the mock server, when we go in here to environments, we can select API mock. And when we're sending this request once again, what we're going to see here is that actually we're still hitting the production API because we're getting the same response. So we need to take a look at what are we using here as a base URL. You will see this is the base URL. This is my uh, production. If we're going here inside the environment, we're going to see here what kind of variables are available. So we'll see that the variable with the address is only called URL. So we're going to quickly go ahead and modify that. So let's change this to base URL. And let's go ahead and save it. So now when the environment is selected and we hover here over the base URL, we're going to see here that we're going to get the mock environment. So this is like the main difference 
We're not changing the collection itself. We're only changing this. So let's go ahead. All right, once again, we're gonna see here, now we are getting the mock customer and we're no longer hitting the real API. This is why it's important to have here some dummy data so that you can better understand what is going on. Okay, perfect. So how can we ensure that these tests are actually good? How can we make changes to the response? Well, in order to make those changes to the response, we need to go back here to this example response that we have, and this is where we can make changes. So for example, hmm, let's say we're not returning this product array. So I'm gonna remove it from here completely. I'm gonna go ahead, save. And let's go ahead and see if we run this test again, what is happening? So we can go ahead, click on send, and we're gonna see Hmm, all our tests still pass because none of these tests actually checked the products, right? So what we could do then is, again, go here to the post bot. Of course, we should go back to the, let's say, production environment where we're getting the real data, so where these products appear. And then we can, of course, go ahead and we have here the option, yeah, add more tests, right? So let's see what these additional tests will be that will be added. Hopefully, it's something in regards to this product. But if not, if that's not the case, we can simply, this is a prompt here, and we're gonna say, add tests to this request that check the product property, that ensure that the products have this particular structure. So if Postman is not automatically doing this for you, you can still write here your own prompt and create the kind of test that you need. This is the main idea. You cannot simply rely on Postman knowing and doing everything perfectly. You still need to be in control. You still need to know exactly how this test generation works. What do you want to test about this request? Now, before we conclude, there's still another cool feature I wanted to show you. So let's go ahead and simply close these tabs here. I'm not going to save anything. I'm going to go here over the collection itself. Oh, from the ellipsis, you're going to see here this option generate test currently in beta. So I'm going to select it, and what we'll see here is we're going to get all the requests in the collection. We can click here on Generate Tests. It will essentially send every request in the collection, so it's important that you know, the um, requests work as they are right now, so there's some automation or data that needs to be passed between the requests. This is something that you need to do. But essentially, it will try to generate the tests necessary for this. So it's already pretty, pretty fast. So if you, let's say you just want to generate a status test for every request in your collection, you can use this tool and it can do it very fast. So for example, let's say we're not really interested in like performance tests. So for example, here we see Postman has added a test where it checks if the response is below 500 milliseconds. Well, while this is nice, I don't really think that it is the kind of test that I want, so I can simply go ahead and remove it from here. That would be a possibility. Anything that you don't need, you can simply go ahead and remove this. Of course, you can go ahead and see by expanding a test, you can take a look and see, okay, what this, this test is trying to do is trying to check if, uh, I don't know, a token is in a particular format or something like that. So for some reason, this is failing. So there are some things that you may want to look into to see exactly if there's something that you need. But I think things will evolve very fast. So we'll be able to go from having a collection and ideally generating that collection automatically from a schema to clicking a button and already having a pretty comprehensive test collection to, you know, just verifying and really trying to see if everything that Postman does is what we need in our tests. But we are getting there, and I think we're getting there faster than you think. So my message to you is definitely try out this feature. See how much more productive you can be with this. But at the same time, try to understand everything that Postman does. Be suspicious. Don't let automation take over before you have your say. See you next time.